before you even hear a word we say, hit subscribe, hit follow. If you're hearing this on iTunes, write us a nice review and rate us. Give us a nice rating, even if you don't like us. Tell us to piss off. If you're hearing us on Spotify, hit follow. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. We need you to subscribe. Facebook, like us there. Twitter, fuck Twitter. I'm done with Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter sucks. <laughs> We're back. We'll catch up to Christmas. the Simpsons eventually. Yeah. And every time we take a break, I guess I guess our seasons are marked with the new year. So this is technically season four, unless you just want to call it a but continuation really, you know, of the, the beginning. Last the last show was like December. Hey, who was that? Hi. Somebody Hi. else in the room with us. Yes, I am. Hi. <laughs> we, ha- we have a new member of the of the gang. Actually, you're not a new member. You're like you're like been floating around with us forever. You yeah, kind of like we go and back hiding in in, in plain sight in stickdom. In stickdom. My <laughs> cat are tucked away in the basement someplace, and we just we just got her out of wrapping and brought her up. Yep. <laughs> She's so, been mummified. Yes. We have Marissa with us. Hi, Hi Marissa. Guys. Hi. And, uh, Hello. Yeah, we go back. I guess I don't know how many years now, but we're kind of like film geeks together. We're, before yep. music, we have like our our movie history. We're, we we kind of clicked on. Yes, we did. Because we're both film snobs, and we 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 use the art form of the word cinema, you know, because that's how snobby we the are. Name. We use words like yeah. cinema. <laughs> Look, I love yes. movies too, but I don't do that. <laughs> I think our first conversation was like on Fellini or something. Yeah, Fassbinder or some shit. Fassbinder. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. See, she she I had she schooled me on that. I yeah. didn't even know any, anything about that. Yeah. I knew, I knew. My tastes have gotten a little bit more. Now, is that just being a fan, or is it? Or did you a major in it, or anything? No, or just, no, a, just a no. film fan. Just like yeah, watch a lot of movies. Well, wow. yeah, had a uh, video card to uh, Kim's in the city. And awesome. Watched a lot of movies. That's pretty cool. Kim's videos, man. Yeah, which got me really nowhere. In life. We're, 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 we're Marissa um, with uh, film, yeah, film, yeah, yeah. Lame, lame stuff. No, I know. No, no, we're cool people, man. I know. We we were like it was like Christmas Eve, one year, and Mike Nirenberg was like, "You got to meet, you got to meet Marissa." Yeah, and I, like, and I already knew who you were because yeah. you know, I, you know, you had turned up at parties and I knew you from Vintage Vinyl. Yes, and um. So I pretended to meet you. No, I think you said, "Did you used to work at Vintage Vinyl?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, yes, I did. Yeah, but but he but I remember it. Nuremberg's like Mike's into film, and you like literally like ran across. You're like film. Yeah, and it was like it was like a magnet. Cool. Like you not just, like, many people like, in our town knew, you know, who these. Uh, these yeah, th- you know, when you say they're a film fan, they're <laughs> thinking like The Godfather and stuff like. Well, that. I love that. No, yeah, man, I love yeah, that. Well, the Godfather. That's, that's there too. Godfather is yeah, probably going the greatest movie yeah. ever. Yeah. But as I've uh, gotten older, some things, you know, when you're young, you can be pretentious. Life and you happens. You get older, and then you don't, you're not so serious Life anymore. Life happens. Yep, exactly. In a nutshell. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, those films were, I mean, you know, even even actors, um, you know, modern actors, a guy like Johnny Depp, say, he, he respects, like, a lot of all those war yeah. films and stuff like that, and it, it kind of made him who he is. I think he was talking to Letterman about it one night in, in an interview, and um, I, I was in I was impressed. I'm not a huge fan of his, but I was impressed with his knowledge of the craft. Yeah, yeah. And that made me respect him a little smart bit Smart guy, yeah. He is pretty smart. Smart dude. guy, yeah. Very well spoken, and uh, it was a great interview. Letterman is like the Howard Stern of, of, of talk shows. television. Yeah. I think. He's just a great interviewer. Yeah. And all those 80s slasher, that's where it started. It's like the 80s slasher movies, and uh, then... I, rem- I, I think I, I think I'm... Are you our age? No. You're younger than us. I'm younger, yeah. Okay. I saw those in drive-in theaters in mm-hmm. upstate New York. Yeah. In the Catskills where, like, you're like, fuck, is Jason going to come out like, from behind us right now? I mean, I, I grew up watching those slasher flicks. I'm, yeah. We're on the same page with that. Yeah, slasher movies, all those uh, USA Up All Night yeah. kind of shit. Love right. that, too. That's yeah. killer. Uh, yeah, I miss that stuff. But so what, what, um, what really got you into rock and roll? Uh, obviously, I just heard that you work at Vintage, which is really cool for those of you that aren't in the know. Vintage Vinyl is a, a local record store to us in Woodbridge, New Jersey, Fords, New Jersey. But um, what got you into the music? Was it music from movies, or were you just always a music fan? Uh, 
Um, always. I mean, even when I was little, um, my I was brought up on uh, MTV. That was my babysitter. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, kind of an appreciation for that. I have older sisters, so cool. three older sisters. Um, you know, one was into the dead. The oh, other wow. was into metal, and the other was into hip hop. So I got a nice rounded, uh, very a eclectic, good mix. yeah, mix. nice education in it. So it's a pretty damn good mix. Uh, yeah, I mean, my ear, you know, I don't discriminate, you know. And you still listen to all those dramas? Pretty much, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you and all your sisters are kind of separated by a few years each, right? Yes. So you get a nice, like, Broad. you kind of span the entire history of exactly. rock you know well, that's well, all the questions history, I have for her I mean, no. I'm done interviewing her now she's going to be part of the show yeah <laughs> I mean my oldest the sister audition. Um, <laughs> she was into the dead but also huge priest you know fan and yeah that I grew up on Zeppelin that kind of stuff that was kind of the first I ran I into I'm not going to name you know name names we don't want to out your identity man mm-hmm. from freaks out there but <laughs> I ran into one of your sisters at a priest concert once oh okay yeah, yeah. Did she um did she travel with the dead or she just was a yeah, fan? Yeah, she, she did. did. Yeah, 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 yeah. She traveled. Um, you know, it's funny because I hated the dead. Actually, that was like the one band I think you don't really get it when you're super young. Um, and then I got older and I think I started smoking weed and I was like, oh, I kind of get this now. It's this pretty pretty good. Yeah, you um, know. I've always known of them. Obviously, was never a big fan. Mm-hmm. Um, never got to see them. And then two summers ago, I got to see John Mayer playing with the Dead and Company in yeah. Camden, and really changed my. You know, I do like jam bands. I'm big on the brothers. Yeah. Band. So it kind of changed my mind a little bit about them. I was yeah. Like, oh, let me explore this a little bit more. Yeah. It's the whole culture. Is just it's really, the whole culture that yeah. surrounds it. Um, you know, it's a bit cult like, but yeah. I, I think, um, you know, with the Dead too, I love old outlaw country and Bob Weir kind of, you know, that's what I was like. Oh wow, all right, I get this now. Yeah. And then you know. Later on, I got the jammy stuff, but um, yeah, all right. <laughs> What's the road to Hanoi Rocks? Because this kind of leads into our topic. My hair metal. We're be talking about the dirt. Yeah, 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 because yeah. Because I never met anybody that even so much as even uttered the, the name Hanoi Rocks. Two and people. Like with you. I know. Two people from Rawway, two people. Now you're really? the third. Love them. That new Hanoi Rocks. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorites, actually. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, one it, of my it, favorites. Well, I think that's also because, uh, you know, growing up on hair metal, um, and then glam, you know, so they were more glam to me. Um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's good I, rock and roll. I mean, you know. I, you, all you got to do is look <laughs> at Raz and know how glam they were. I mean, they, you know, Raz, Raz, yeah. Oh, Raz, 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 yeah. I mean, he was just really like out there. He was something right out of the seventies. Oh, it, totally. And then you had Michael Monroe, who's just and Michael beautiful. Monroe, obviously. Yeah. yeah. He, he, was, <laughs> he was that, st- like that beautiful. He was the stereotype of that genre. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He had a, he had solo records out too, didn't he? In the, yes, in the he did. Night, was it late eighties? I guess it was. Was a dead jail and rock and roll. Did you interview the... one of them, or did you? I know you've done like you've interviewed several. Musicians I did. In the uh, past, and you've hung with you've hung with quite a few people. But was was anybody in that group anybody you've ever crossed paths with? That's a good question. I can't even. Remember. I think one of them. I forget who it was. Uh, years ago, was working in a record store yeah. uh, on St. Mark's. Um, okay. Maybe it was Sam Yaffa. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But somebody had tipped me off that he was working there. And I was like, you know, yeah. oh, shit. And I went in and I kind of was like, what am I going to say to you? You know, <laughs> I, I I just was like, oh, cool. You know, there he is. And that was it. But, yeah, no, never. I would love to. But, yeah. We got to pick Finland. your brain at, uh, at some point. We got to pick your brain. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to roll off of your question a little bit. Just for one. I don't want to get too far off topic. But working at Vintage. When you were working there, were they still having like the um, the in house? Uh, obviously, they always had the signings, but mm-hmm. were they having like the in house like sessions and stuff like that as well? They were. Um, no, actually, it was a little bit. They had some shows there, but when I was there, um, the t- I wasn't there for very long, maybe six, seven you months. You were there for like almost like the beginning of like the really big guests coming there. Yeah, there was no one basis. really huge when I was there. It was a lot of hardcore shows. Slayer, like, you know, uh, pro- uh, Slayer has been there a bunch of times, I think. Um, but I, I just know that uh, the Winery Dogs played there not too long ago, and I, I wasn't able to go. But I just totally dig it because I, you know when I saw that like little stage come up in the back, I was like, oh wow, look at this! And then DHA got heavily involved, and even SOU. Yeah, was, no, that's cool. No, I think they had that there when I s- it was there, but 
No, I, that was the first job I got fired from. Oh, wow. Because <laughs> I was like a teenager. I think I lied about my age, um, and I didn't have a car. So oh, wow. they're like, well, why yeah. can't you ever get here on time? But, <laughs> oh, uh, man. No, that would you know that would have been cool because I know there was like it's an Aussie there and yeah, a bunch of Aussie's people were there. there. Sure, he has. So, got crows. Yeah. I mean, even off metal and and just rock and roll. Yeah. The nice thing too was that I was uh, heavily you know into vinyl, so all the used they had a great used record selection there. They still do. And that was so when vinyl nobody wanted vinyl. I, yeah, yeah, everybody everybody was I would it ninety nine cents a piece. Would come in <laughs> and I mean I was like in heaven. Yeah. yeah get them for like barely nothing. Yeah. So. Now I'm like struggling to put my collection back together because everything I sold or I got tired of a madman for four bucks. Away. <laughs> I have everything I in a I trunk. <laughs> if you can get that for four bucks, that's, yeah. that's your lucky. I, I mean, it's beat up as it's hell, but I was like, Jesus Christ, it's four dollars. Yeah. I know. Like, even when I brought it up, dollars for a shitty copy. Even now, when too. I brought it up to the counter, he's like, "You just found that in the bin." I was like, "Yeah, goes, that's a good that's fucking." Yeah. <laughs> so I'm walking out of there that night with that, um, Asia by Steely Dan, and. Riley wanted Thriller. Surprisingly enough, Thriller, they still make so many copies of that record. Yeah. It's still only $20. Really? $20 for that album. Yeah, that's crazy. New? Brand new. Brand new? Yeah, yeah. Brand new. a lot of them are like over, yeah, at, at least. Asia, I think I paid 27 there's for there's so many wow. copies of Thriller. There's so many, there's so many, there's so Press much things. Thriller out there. You know, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's so just so blew me away copies. that, because vinyl is, new vinyl right now is just ridiculously priced. Yeah. yeah. The millennials are paying the price. Yep, they're, 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 I'll buy that, I'll buy that. They're fancy little setups. You know, every time she uh, Riley, my daughter's name is Riley. Every time mm-hmm. she wants a Billy Eilish, she wants Panic at the Disco. It, it's twenty. There's twenty seven dollars a record. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ. Or you buy digitally. the used, and when it skips, you put the penny on top so it doesn't yeah. skip. <laughs> <laughs> penny. Sometimes a penny was too heavy. Yeah. You have to use a dime as a yeah. little lighter. <laughs> <laughs> a quarter would really warp it, though. But uh, no, that's so funny. Yeah, my I can't have a record player out because I have little kids, so they will destroy. Third, you're the third person, Hanoi Rock. That that's imp- wow. So did you see the <laughs> dirt yet? The yes, I saw the dirt. The dirt. The dirt. Um, I'm reading the comments. Some of the comments, and I'm like some people are like actually like a little bit more hostile than I ever yeah. intended to be. Yeah, I'm not hostile about it. I just I, you know Mike and I discussed this pre-show. I, I didn't like it the way it was acted. The actors I thought were horrible. Yeah, it was like a TV movie. It Ugh. was cheesy. I mean, I found it entertaining, but I wouldn't take... Did you ever read the book? No. Yeah, see, the book is... The book is the is, dirt. It's fucking great. Yeah. yeah, the book is great. Um, You know, and this is watered down. Um, the stories of Ozzy, though, are notorious. I yeah. mean, I knew those going into it. Oh, totally. So to see it you knew out, that so. was going to be... They were going to, like, yeah, show they, that. They were going to yeah. show every little yeah. detail of that because yeah. it's something that's, hey, they want for the shock value. Of course, the, the, yeah. That guy, Machine Gun Kelly, yeah. just pissed me off. From the second I saw him come onto the screen, he was the guy who played Tommy Lee. From the second I saw him enter that w- film, I was yeah. like, I want to strangle this now, guy. What didn't you yeah, like yeah, about yeah. him, out of curiosity? He was just a fucking goofball. And I, and, and, I mean, it wasn't even... Tommy was always that kind of a goofy guy, or is always that kind of a goofy guy, and like yeah. lanky and arms going around. It kind of reminds me of a Muppet. Yeah. Know? But this guy just took it to a whole nother level where I was just like, oh my God, get off the, move the camera away from him. Mm. Even the guy who played Mick Mars, who I love, because he was, he, he was a guy in Game of Thrones. Yes, yeah. That is phenomenal. Yeah. And I do like him as an actor. He was a British actor. I've seen him pop up in a lot of different things. I was just like, I think he, he I think he was reaching. He was nothing like Mick Mars no, either. Not nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know I, where. I felt like he was like almost like a char- a character or something like that. They a, all were. They yeah. just almost made him seem like, like I don't know, like Igor or something. Like he was just like this character, just like the, he barely spoke. If he said something, oh, it was totally. like very like monosyllabic. He was older than them, so. Old enough. Yeah. They yeah. call him old man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. truth behind that, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, there are things that I did like about it that they took from the book, the Aussie stuff, obviously. Mm-hmm. The um the Hanoi Rock stuff that yeah. whole crash with Vince, um I feel like he just kind of walked away from that and and I mean he killed somebody oh totally and and he did no time theater you know I mean theater of a pain either was out or just came out or was about to come out and they were worried if Vince was ever going to fucking be able to perform again yeah. over that I remember yeah. I mean I was yeah. like sixteen I think um so I did dig that and um I I, I liked the backstory for it's actually one of my favorite crew songs for on with the show yeah I yeah. didn't realize that he wrote that about himself so yeah I think he wrote that. I, I love found that song. interesting. Yeah, I like that they focused on early crew. Um, you know, because I, I think that's the best stuff. Yep. Um, you know, those first two albums are first one's great. Um, Even I like Shout. Yeah, I, I love Shout. Yeah. Shout. And then I kind of skip maybe one or two. Believe it or not, I like Doctor Feelgood. 
I, There's I a for few some good reason jams I do. <laughs> I saw that tour, <laughs> and, and I don't know. It's just something about that record that it, it, I don't know, man. It's I, I don't know. It's not in the first two albums. No, no. I mean, the first one is great. Shout at the devil. I always have a soft spot for it because when I was little, uh, my sister came home with that album, and yeah. it scared the like, shit out of me. That? I was like, "What is this?" Yeah. And you shout, and I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> this is like." Scariest shit, and then you get older. And you're like, oh my god, this is not. It's like Kiss, you know. I it's get, the same I get thing. that from from somebody that's a little bit younger than us. Yeah, and that you know, I I was never a fan. I never liked Motley Crue. Yeah, I, I, ne- I didn't I didn't hate them, but I was just never a fan. I think for the most part, it was Vince Neil is his voice. Uh, yeah, he's horrible. But alive. that said, I get it. I get it when you say it scared the shit out of you. Like to yeah. me, I look at it and I was like, all right, who these wannabes? Like they they like they're trying to they're, they're like they're taking a little yeah. bit of this, a little bit of that, and they're doing everything Kiss did and whatever. The video, you saw the blood, you know. But yeah. I the get it, in, like, you know. Clothing. Yeah, that was yeah. your introduction to something that's like, holy shit, what's this yeah. about? You know, who are these guys? What's and going you're on? right though, because it kind of felt that way when I was a kid seeing Kiss. You were yeah. like, what is yeah. that? So that's that the was, demon, Kiss was man. like that's, the scare. Yeah, that was horrifying. That was their version of yeah. like her generation, exactly. different generation, exactly. You know, and yeah, it exactly. comes right exactly. around like literally almost like a decade after Kiss. Yep. Yeah, because like Kiss hits in seventy. Well, I, I guess it was 74, but... 82 was yeah. crew, I guess, right? 81, yeah, 82? Yeah. 81, 182. Like, you, they they were really on, like, the national radar by the time, um, like, when... In between, in between Too Fast for Love and Shout, Shout. Out the Devil. Yeah. It wasn't right when the first record came out, but it was kind of, like, in between, in between. when they opened for yeah, Kiss. Yeah, because when that, by the time Shout came out, it was already, like, yeah. you know, there were, like... There I were think it was, like, once they yeah. opened like for Kiss, and they opened for somebody else. I don't, I don't remember who it was, but I know they opened for Kiss... On the creek, they were killing the strip, the though, man. I mean, for uh, for however many years yeah. they had the first record out, and they were just killing the strip. Yeah, yeah. kind of it kind of reminds me of what Van Halen was doing when they first broke. I mean, they were just lighting it up on the strip, and you're like, "How is this band not signed?" Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I mean, I had fun watching it. I mean, you can't. I was like watching it. I was just like, I had a smile the whole time. Yeah. I knew what was ridiculous. I knew what was historically wrong. I was never a fan, so I don't know the history the mm-hmm. way their fans do, and I don't know, what, you know, about the, the the songs and the lyrics and all that stuff. But you know, if you grew up with metal and you knew the timeline and you kind of lived through they, it, they jumped around quite. You oh, know, totally, yeah. You know what they were getting wrong, yeah. yeah like they, it they was it one over, thing I found that was ridiculous about it was they signed with Elektra or whatever their label was. They signed their deal, and the same night. Vince Neil or one of them is like banging the the guys chick, right, yeah, the A&R yeah, guys yeah. Like chick yeah. as they're about to go on stage at an arena yeah. and they open with Shout at the Devil just, yeah. which is, was signed. on their second record yeah you know and yeah. it's like all of this like history cram- two years worth of history crammed into one scene yeah and that drives me nuts because like I'm kind of like a like I'm a, I'm like a history guy yeah. you know and like I it, it's like a, it's like a pet peeve when you get a, like something wrong in, in the timeline you yeah yeah Something else that totally bothered me was the there was Doc McGee, like the whole thing of Doc McGee when he meets them and he's just like, I manage Kiss, I make a lot of money for Kiss. Number one, <laughs> Doc McGee, <laughs> Doc McGee didn't manage Kiss until 1996, <laughs> like he didn't even he had nothing to do with Kiss yeah. until 1996. Wow, you know, I think they did. I think they did that um, just to let everybody let the audience know who he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but what they yeah, because yeah. he had managed a lot of bands, and also oh, he was on the scene. when he's like, "Oh, I make a lot of money for Kiss." Yeah, not then. In 1981, yeah. man, Kiss was like Kiss. Kiss couldn't get arrested. Yeah, Kiss they was couldn't like get out of their own fucking way. Exactly, you making money for Kiss then. <laughs> so, yeah, I was just kind of laughing at that. And that's when that you know they were like the, the crews of the, the Motley crews of the world were like the, the changing of the guard. The new, you know. Yeah, I mean? yeah. And it happens every decade. I mean, you know, because then the Pearl Jam and Nirvana's changed that whole other, you know, they, it, that decade was over and, and grunge hit. Well, I love the story of um, the Misfits. It was Glenn Danzig and I think uh, maybe Doyle or they were on the strip and they uh, chased Motley Crue down. They were going to beat the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> I always love that story. Yeah, probably because he was yeah. stupid with a girlfriend or something. Yeah. Like those, I mean, it, it, or know, there, according I think, to the book, the debauchery was just, off the fucking charts with these guys, and even later, yeah. I mean, I I know good family friend was their tour manager, so I mean, I this shit still went on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even you think they'd calm down when they got older, and I yeah. think they were even more fucking crazy, <laughs> <laughs> more money. But um, it's amazing to me how many people watched it, like people who I would never think 
would ever watch something like that or even knew who Motley Crue were, and they're all, you know, oh, it's great. I'm like, I think people are just starving for a good story, man. Yeah. It has something to do with actual real rock and, and roll, yeah. man. Especially and on Netflix the le- on the heels of Queen. Right. Yeah, Netflix is Netflix content right now. It, they're hitting it out of the park. Yeah, hitting it out of the park. They have probably the best 4K library anywhere. Although I'll never look at the like Harry Nilsson song uh, the same way again. That Russian Doll show. Did yeah. you see Russian I Doll? Oh that. yeah, I tried to I watch know. it. The, uh, the second episode, I kind of like halfway through the second. Like I, I would like to try it again. Yeah. But after I was halfway through the second episode, I'm like, I can't do this you anymore. No, it killed the song. I totally. can't. I can't do this anymore. This is just like you know. Did you know that show? Did you try yeah, watching yeah, that? I tried. And I was like, nah. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a big fan of hers. Oh, I can't she's think of her so. Name. An- she's annoying. She is. Um, she was annoying in American Pie. She was annoying yeah. in Orange is the New Black. She's so acty and over the top and just. I only down know her Beverly from. Hills, down, down, down. That's, oh, that's Beverly, what I know her from. Beverly Hills. And no, Down and Out. It was a Down and Out. And Beverly, no. The one with Alan, where Alan, Alan Arkin, Arkin, Arkin is her father. Alan Arkin's yeah, uh, her father. Beverly, it was a Beverly, was it a Beverly Hillbillies movie. Was it? No, yeah, no, Down no. and Out in Beverly Hills is like an 80s movie. Right, right. But it's not Beverly Hillbillies. It's no, it's Down and Out in Beverly Hills. No, I think she's correct that it, down and out in Beverly Hills was like the slums a, uh, of Beverly Hills. Slums of Beverly Hills. Hills. Yeah, yeah, there you, you go. You <laughs> Something with Beverly Hills. <laughs> Three minds on movies we weren't going to yeah. not leave. That, that one wasn't going to leave the room uh, unattended. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and speaking of soundtracks, yeah, this though, is like this, '80s girl over here. Like she's like, you know, you're like your knowledge of the '80s is just like okay. I'm not going to argue with it. Yeah. I say it's the '80s. Okay. <laughs> I do feel that they got the soundtrack right. They they put the right kind of music in, you know. For uh, a Russian for, doll? For, no, the dirt. Oh, for the dirt. Yeah, Getting yeah. Back to the dirt. They sprinkled in just enough good stuff. Mm. Uh, again, on with the show. Yeah, happens to be one of my favorite one, songs too. on yeah. that. Yeah. On that first album. And I was like, oh, okay. They threw that one in there. And yeah. Live Wire, you knew was going to make. It's Live Wire was one of the few stuff. crew songs that I liked. Yeah. Um,. Yeah, a lot of stuff from uh, from the first album. It's great. Too Fast for Love. Like, those songs are great. And, um, yeah, it's weird to hear them on a TV, you know, a show. Usually the Motley Crue songs, you hear girls, 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 and the big yeah. ones, and mm-hmm. that one. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. But, yeah, it's very interesting, the people who uh, really like it. So Yeah, it's, that, it's, that's, that, that was interesting. And, it, again, that's Netflix. Netflix is just putting out the content. Yeah. You, know, you have a Netflix account, it. you're looking for something to watch, yep. and there it is. I, I mean, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan, and I can remember early on. I've read all the novels. I I knew everything that was coming before it came. Yeah. Now I'm in the dark. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I I was like, I was trying to preach to everybody about how great this show is going to be. How great. Nobody wanted anything to do with it. And then yeah. all of a sudden, after the middle of that first season, it just skyrocketed. Yeah, after the Red Wedding or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Red Wedding. Probably. <laughs> then like, everybody watched it. Yeah. We were talking about this on the phone related to the influence of Motley, like the Motley Crew. When they get back to the, <laughs> when you go back to the trailer, when you go back to the trailer and you got the guy going, we're going to show him so we're going to give the world something that nobody's ever seen before, you know? Yeah. What did they do? Like, I, my question, seriously, like, if people thought I was hating on him, I really wasn't hating. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm asking, like, like, what did they do besides have, do like, have, a, have their drummer that. upside down that was like nobody ever did before? And were were they trends were they trend followers like that? And, and like I don't mean that in a disparaging way. Every band in the eighties followed trends. Yeah. Like there were there were there were very few original acts in the eighties. Tommy Lee running through the hotel room in his underwear causing havoc. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Led Zeppelin did it first. Um, the, the you know spitting out blood. Kiss, yeah. You know. Yeah. But they copied a lot from Hanoi Rocks too. So yeah. Uh, just. You know, the drum thing like, was cool, though. I mean, him spinning around, I mean, that was unique to them. Yeah. Him going up in that cage and spinning. And mm-hmm. to see it was mind-blowing. Right. I, I mean, so the whole idea of, like, everybody's drums only. going out, forward, and going up and down, and, uh, you know, like, d- Peter Chris. But he went he upside went down. He went out over the crowd. Yeah. over the crowd, yeah, over so the crowd on this fucking that's, extending arm and was, was spinning, kind of, like, on yeah. a goddamn roller coaster yeah. and playing. What was cool about it is he was playing... Um, and what did he say? How did he say it? It was Doctor Feel Good tour when he did it too. Um, something like these are the best songs to like drink and get laid to, or something some along those lines. So it was like ACDC and Zeppelin, and he was. They had the music, but he was just the drum track was taken out, and he was just thumping away. And mm. I'm not gonna take anything with that guy's talent. He's probably the most talented guy in that group. Yeah. As far as you know, yeah. individual. Yeah. Musically, though, man, is there anything that we that hasn't been? I mean, I don't just know. It's, good a, rock it's just roll. good rock and roll, yeah. and it just kind of fits in with what was going on, the style of what yeah, was big in the I mean, 80s. With them, and, though, you know, I they, mean, Vince, you had a very 
he had a very unique, distinctive voice. Oh, totally. And like also, it or you not. had these guys who were all dark, and then you had this blonde in the front. Right. So they, he, they stood out. Yeah, yeah, they definitely stood out for that. Yep. Yeah. He was not a good live singer, though. Look, go, go look at the Us Festival. Motley Crue's performance at the Us Festival? Yeah. Eesh. Well, they also, I mean, I don't know if you guys know about Venom, but they stole a lot of their look from Venom. Did they um, really? Yeah. Venom were into hmm. that whole, the same studded, you know. Yeah. Um, That's and interesting. Yeah, you know, and they were pretty much right around, right after Venom. So, I mean, maybe the, they were just influenced them, but they, well, I... Also, Venom was probably still considered very underground at that point, though, yeah. too, right? I mean, they... Like, I looked at a picture of Motley Crue from, like, 1981 when their first record came out, and they just looked like it it was, like, a conglomeration of, like, they raided Paul Stanley's closet and David Lee Roth's closet with the spandex, like, the tiger stripes. You know, it was like like David Lee Roth was wearing that stuff on the Farewell, Fair Warning Tour. Yeah. And stuff that, you know, it was really, it it came straight out of Paul Stanley and David Lee Roth. And New York Dolls, too. You know, and the Venom thing. Yeah, Yeah, the Dolls. It looked like it belonged in the group. But... You know, between that and the Swede and all that, you know, glam, you could tell he was. There, there really weren't like uh, I think like a lot of, and this is just this is just an opinion, like you know anything else. It's like, but I I, I don't think there's that many trend setters. There are more trend followers. There are there are very few original people in each decade. I would say like maybe one or two, three at the most in each decade we that set the that. trends in each decade in like dozens and dozens. Kravitz. We, we discussed that briefly. Yeah, about like that like the eighties in the eighties, like the trendsetters were probably like Michael Jackson, Madonna. And what would be the trendsetter for metal? Like, a, like everything. Like, if there was like a, if there was a template for what, Sabbath, for what, yeah, maybe, for what yeah. became the eighties? Yeah, because everybody had like that, that a black, uh, a black leather with like the studs on it. Yeah, straight yeah. Out yeah. Of the priest, or, or even made. I mean, he had a vest version of that jacket. Yeah, but they had it had all and those studs in it. British metal, it, it basically was, I think. Yeah. You know, early, early new British wave. metal. Yeah, the whole yeah. new wave of British heavy metal is all that stuff. Everything was coming out of Britain out of the eighties uh, until like hair metal really. Yeah, this right, is even this, hair is, metal this is where this is like I surprised myself because I was like thinking about this. And I was like, if I have to be totally honest, and I was thinking about the whole trend setting thing and like we're crew trend followers. If there was one thing, if there was one thing that crew did, like maybe inadvertently, and I don't know this to be true, but if you think about the timeline of metal the whole british thing the priest like the early maiden and all that yeah. sabbath for the most part metal the look of metal was black yeah. it was black studs leather 82 80 82 84 right this is this is the funny thing this is like we're we're talking about this 80 82 like the even number of years the big metal acts were releasing records right so it was priest maiden Somewhere around 85, man, crew comes with Theater of Pain. And Theater of Pain changes the color scheme. Now, this oh, is, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. The whole color <laughs> scheme The whole purple, color yeah. scheme changes. Yeah. You lavender. start getting, like, pastel. Like, you start yeah. getting, like, yeah. lavender yeah. and yeah. pink. And, like, and by the, the end of the year, you got Kiss putting out Asylum, and Gene Simmons looks like yeah. Maud. Yeah. And, po- and the poisons of the world. And yeah, poison. Like, yeah. Cinderella. Well, it's like, uh, you know, the, the I think that's why crew did and, it, to In 86. Yeah. So poison like the, was and, on their way up. And the following year, when the big bands yeah, came Cinderella back. Yeah, Cinderella, too, because that yeah. pastel. Uh, right. Yeah, the, the album cover is all record. pastel smoke. I love right. that record. And that, <laughs> the following year, when the bigger record. bands, like Ozzy and Priest and Maiden, came back, they were very colorful, too. You know, the ultimate sin. Ozzy comes out and sees what happened to you, dude. I think, if anything, like the one time that. Like if they had any influence whatsoever, it was Pastel on fashion. Metal. It was on like it was like <laughs> <laughs> they ushered in like the whole. They should have been fucking it. donning Easter baskets. <laughs> <laughs> the Easter egg it's my tour. Easter scheme. Uh, no, it, well, it's also brought like, to you by Paws. I mean, I I remember watching uh, the decline of Western civilization, the Metal Years. Yeah, you man. know, and that was a great turning point because. It really highlighted all those glam bands, all these followers who mm-hmm. were pretty much clones of crew, uh, you know. And then at the fucking end, you have Megadeth, you know, <laughs> and they fucking yeah. come in, and you're just like, holy shit, this is awesome. So I feel like that was like a whole turning point too, from that metal, that cheesy, you know, glam, um, you know, to something harder and more serious. Now, now, Twisted Sister and Van Halen aside, okay, them two bands aside. The timeline of 85 is very interesting. Like, 85 doesn't end the way it starts. 85 ends, uh, 
it kind of it, it ends everything's very colorful yeah so the band's coming out of 84 it's all very like you know priest was coming out at defenders of the faith you know ozzy was bark at the moon yeah motley Crue was still late it was like they were coming oh, yeah. off a Ultimate shout of the devil yeah. you know and and so by the end of 85 you had rat Invasion yeah. of Your Privacy, yeah. you know, because 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 Theater of Pain comes out in the spring. Yeah, Invasion of Your Privacy comes out in the like fall, late summer, early, fall, you know. So it's like kind of like it was like this chain reaction of color. Yeah, yeah. Where where color Cinderella and sequin nice. robes, Cinder- yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything starts getting added to the the whole metal look. Yeah, because even uh, Tom Kiefer, he wore a lot of purple and. Yeah. And eighty six is also yeah. the year where like you had Master of Puppets and Rain and Blood. Yeah. And you had like Slayer fans, like Thrash fans, that started taking aim at the rest of metal yeah. and started like like Priest became posers yeah. because they put they put out Turbo. Yeah, Everybody you know, that wasn't like that Slayer. Me off. Yeah, yeah. That always fucking pissed me off. Because Ozzy was a poser. All those like, bands, know, there's totally the Slayers of the world and the like, Metallicas of the world, all paid paid homage to. to the priests and the maidens of the world, like if even you, Kiss. I mean, I mean, without those bands, fucking Slayer wouldn't even be around. Tom yeah. Araya would be fucking pumping gas and at an Exxon station. That. You know, I don't think it's anything they wouldn't. You know, they all. Oh, they all admitted yeah, yeah, it. They yeah, absolutely yeah. did. It was the fans it's of the fans. those bands. It was the, yeah, that exactly. Off more, not the yeah. bands themselves yeah. at all. Yeah, at all. I, I mean, I could remember seeing Pantera and then bringing up guys from Anthrax and guys and fucking Ace Frehley and are doing. Kiss songs at the end of the Pantera yeah. show, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, this is fucking great!" Yeah, they all paid homage to them. Like, eighty four, eighty four. If like like Priest and Maiden were the shit, what yeah, they were? And in eighty six, if you listen to Priest and Maiden, you were a poser. You know, it was a, if you didn't it play a certain enough. speed, yeah. get out of here. You know, and even Oz, they were taking aim at Ozzy. It's man, like now, it's Prince like uh, even hip hop. Everybody's listening to this fucking Marble Mouth shit, and I'm like, yeah. what, are, you, "Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's not growth." <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, there's you, nothing... like you don't like that. No, do you? I'm. You know, there's very few people out. Um, I mean, once in a while, I hear a song I'm like, "Oh, this is catchy," but but that's the um, beat or the rap. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of this, like, you know, it's like cadence. It's just the the. I don't really. Like the, they, I'm uh, starting to feel my Tekashi age now. Fucking six <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, that shit's. Like, those guys are. I, every time one of those guys gets popular again, I wait for the next Eminem record so that he can fucking kill him. Yeah, I love it. And you hear it just, he blisters. There's a, a there's a YouTube video out of him going through each one of those fucking guys and just blasting them. And I'm yeah. just, oh my God. He's like, that dude is a lyrical genius. He was born in the wrong color. But he really was. <laughs> and I'm not saying anything bad about that. It, there's, Dr. Dre knows it. Yeah. Missy Elliott even said it about him before he hit. She was like, Dr. Dre's got this guy coming out, Eminem. And I was just like, oh my God, that record dropped. It changed my life. All right, so another thing I wanted to talk about, and we kind of polled our audience. We have an audience on, like, our I, the people that listen on iTunes, and they're, I can't identify them because I don't look too much into our media host that much, into the statistics and all that stuff. and uh, So it's kind of tough to tell who's listening to us yeah. on iTunes. But our Facebook crowd is like they're like pure metalheads. Yeah, you know yeah, they're yeah, all yeah. metalheads, like yeah. each and every There's one a, of them. No, you got to sprinkle a few deadheads in there too. There's a few deadheads, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Hardcore we kind of just like pulled yeah. the audience on what we should talk about in the first episode. Now this is before we decided that the dirt was going to be our main topic. Yeah. So it said, mu- "What music related topic should we talk about?" Uh, we're taking your request for the first episode of the new season. We'll just riff. On a couple of these, a couple of these things. So, uh, the use of backing tracks and the end of live concerts, quote unquote, uh, very controversial now. If you're if you're following the Kiss tour, okay, no, because Paul followed. Stanley has been, you know, uh, well, he lip synced a bunch of the early Kiss shows on the early part of the tour, and people were just like tracking that they were just kind of like putting show like like they put like four versions of detroit rock city side by side and it was identical so i think paul is kind of like caught on like people are you know he's on trial people are watching him now and like like, so now they're kind of doing it live he's trying to sing live more yeah but you Uh, know i I know more than a few people who were at the garden show and said they had a blast yeah hey it's it's, i'll tell you one thing they lived up what with all of the hype about this stage uh, they delivered that's yeah. They've never done anything There's as big, one. Man. I want to kick just... Nikki Six in his fucking face. It's how <laughs> dare he say Kiss ripped him off? Yeah. yeah, for their final tour. Yeah, fuck you, man. They owe everything they you did. You couldn't to Kiss, even man. stand yeah. in Gene Simmons's <laughs> fucking boots, man. Yeah. Oh my god! Look, Nikki, just 
Stop. Just stop. Yeah. Stop. That's ego. And maybe that's just the Kiss fan. No, nah, yeah, that's his ego, and that's yeah. No, I. <laughs> they ripped us. <laughs> I off. totally forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. And again, that was a blurb in in Mike's. Uh, that was one of Mike's. Um, favorite companies that like to put those little blurbs out on Facebook that blabbermouth.net yeah Boom, that was oh, a blurb. yeah, yeah. And, and it got me it was, people it was click fired. Yeah. Yeah, click it was clickbait though because it got me I was like what is this asshole saying yeah <laughs> but look it book. worked because it work. even if Nikki Six didn't even think that if he put that in fired there right up. it worked it the only thing I could right say up. in his in, like just to agree slightly with him that it was yeah it, it resembles it because it's the same stage designer yeah 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 okay um, somebody said they ripped you off yeah that's that's New artists or bands? Question mark. Question mark. Question we mark. We always get hit with that. We always get yeah. So I like um I I if you if if you're on Facebook with me and we all are so I mean you guys know uh, I've been talking about endlessly about this band called Shannon and the Clams and I uh, this and Shannon Shaw which okay. I love or she's got a solo album out and uh, it's called Shannon in Nashville. Check it out. That's all I'm gonna say. Just check I'm it out. Not currently looking for anything new to listen to. Okay. You, but you, but you, yeah, you, you. In the last couple years, you've always had a new band to say, like, check this out. This is Thermate, or this is Ghost, and Ghost turned out to be huge. Ghost was huge yeah. You called them, man. You called it. Thermate, Ghost, you know? Winery Dogs. Um, yeah, you, you had, you had Greta Van Fleet. Though. And then there was another one that you talked about um, where you were in Texas that oh. Aaron turned you on to. It was more like a blue uh, oh, Ben, what the hell was he? or it was something, something. Uh, yeah, I can't. Think. We have to listen back to that. I can't remember who the hell he was. That guy's great. Yeah, and Lori from you know um, from Liberty. Her daughter. Remember when her daughter was in town last year, yeah. and she was into the same person. Yeah, Radcliffe, it, Radcliffe, something Radcliffe. Ratliff, Daniel Ratliff. Ratliff, yeah, Daniel Ratliff. Isn't that the dude from the, yeah, so Harry, the, Potter the Harry Potter or Ben Radcliffe or Daniel? Is Daniel it? Radcliffe. All right, <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. Is that Harry Potter? Harry, yeah, oh, that's the kid. Something yeah. Radcliffe. Something Ratliff. Ratliff. Yeah. It's yeah. not Radcliffe. Nathaniel no, Ratliff. Nathaniel. That's yeah, it. Nathaniel Ratliff. Yeah, okay, that's it. Okay, good. good. But anyway, good like stuff. they were real good stuff. Okay, there was uh, something else that oh, um, I saw it Asbury Lane. There the was one paper. There was one funny one that I want to get to. There was like, and I don't know how much any of us know about this dude. I just know very, very broad, like Ooh, the uh, guy who posted it or the band. No, the band, the person. Okay, so oh. like, so, so this is so. Vic says, I "Why the it. hell is Mike Patton? Why the hell is Mike Patton recognized as a genius?" Can <laughs> anybody answer this question? Mike Patton, like the dude from uh, Faith No More, Faith No More, yeah. and like a thousand other bands. Yeah, right? They do, they do treat him. You know, you know where he falls under? He falls under that fucking goddamn. <laughs> oh, what's his fucking name? <laughs> that blonde haired dude, fucking uh, uh, Beck. Oh, I can't stand Beck. And that's who, uh, Mike, that's who Patton yeah, reminds me of. I like Beck. Of. I, Critics think he's the greatest goddamn thing to walk the face. I saw him on Saturday Night Live. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah. It's like it's like when you talk about Radiohead, and here's Radiohead. Yeah. <laughs> Here they are. Everybody should be. I can't even say it because now we have a female Bowing on the program to... again. <laughs> Everybody should be down on their knees. Like, <laughs> I'm out of here with that shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah <That's>... thank you. <laughs> Now Damn. I finally got somebody to go against him with Radiohead. I, <laughs> I can't wait till you guys go head to head on Steely Dan, though. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I had to go. I was like, shake okay. my we head. should. We need to have a show just on her, just on her Donald Fagan experience. <laughs> yeah, I heard he's a real prick. She told it Literally. in parts on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I heard. He's, I heard like he. I heard he's a real. <laughs> she, remember your parts of like everybody's like waiting for the next part. I don't think I ever finished it. <laughs> you never did finish I, I it. I totally yeah. Going my uh, ADD. Yeah. yeah. I heard he's a real <laughs> asshole. Milkshake. I think I read some somebody talking about getting give, cutting his hair or something like that. I read something about it on Facebook, and he was just like a complete asshole in a barber's chair. That's the last place you want to be an asshole, first of all. Yeah, well, that's right. Maybe it was me, because I, that's... You did it? No, I didn't cut his hair, but he was you in my salon. salon. Yes. It had to be... Yeah, it must have been me. There was a connection then from the, how I got to that story I from him. How the fuck did you guess? Yeah. Uh, so that yeah. story is through you. That's probably yeah. through oh, me. Oh, we're going to absolutely likely. have a yeah. great conversation yeah. about that. Most likely. And that's when you... Because it just struck when you said that. Mm. I, I don't know... I don't know how I would have read that on her page, though, yeah. unless it was linked to you. Or somebody commented that maybe. we're mutual, and maybe. then... Yeah, and then maybe you saw it. I don't know. Did maybe. I put it on Facebook? You've had some... Yeah, you've had some interesting people in your uh, my world. chair. Yeah, your, my... You still cut hair? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but so Not he was in the shop that you worked at. I worked in We don't have to go crazy about no, it. No, no. I just want to get a I small little piece of it. I worked in a very high end salon in Manhattan. Okay. Um in a very famous hotel. His wife, um, Libby, was a very colorful 
character. Um, her and I became friends. Mm. Uh, but she was a little cuckoo. Uh, but she had great stories. She was married to um, Lee Von Helm. Oh, no um, shit. For years. Oh my God, I would have loved to hear so, those stories. So, talk to her. I used to, you know, she's coming. She come in all the time. Yeah. Uh, hang out with her. Um, I think she even wanted me to work for her at some point too. And I was like, No, you're too fucking crazy. <laughs> Anyhow, Donald would come in a lot, uh, kind of wandering in, and uh, yeah, he, you know, was quite very polite, not a nasty guy. Um, but a secret perv. He's all. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh without a perv. doubt, that I definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're just their, their <laughs> band name alone. Their their band name alone. Yeah. Um, and the the song fucking everyone's gone to the movies is basically about showing porn in a basement. To be mm. honest with you, I mean he's. There, I don't even know if it's a secret about him. I think maybe guys like me in the know. Yeah. About that guy, or that yeah. he's a fucking. He is. Well, it's also because you. It's weird because he's not like all right. You know, you have your. 80s rock stars or even your 70s rock stars who are de- you know all about debauchery yeah. Steely Dan no, were not, not yeah. like that but you don't associate them with that of course they probably were uh, but Steely Dan is the last fucking band you know they're, they're cr- for the it, most it, part they were a faceless band yeah, they were only yeah, yeah. Fagan yeah. and Becker so yeah. nobody it's, knew who they they didn't tour for it 20 years it comes off as creepy yeah. on them yeah whereas yeah. a guy like uh, I don't know a guy like uh, Steven Tyler Oh it, yeah, it, it's it, it's not as creepy on a guy no. like that because he's not, he's aged yes, but he's not balding. He's not you, you don't see him driving in a Mercedes. That's right. To go pick up fucking groceries from the you know the quickie right. stop or something. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I get it. I totally get it. And he's out. He's kind of like out, and you just kind of expect it. From, Was he know. quiet? Was he a quiet guy? Quiet guy, polite. Uh, you know. I think he on thinks, various substances, probably. Yeah, um, I think he thinks he's Ray Charles. I think he's like the. I think I, I, I truly he, believe he looks like Ray. Yep. He looks like a he, white I Ray Charles. I truly believe that he thinks that he is Ray, Ray Charles in, reincarnated. I, yeah. And the last moves. time I saw them at the Beacon, when he was walking off, like they have a short little break, he's walking on. He even fucking walked like yeah. like Ray Charles. I'm like, what the fuck? And when he's playing. Got the head yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, look, I, I hey, he might be a jerk off and the biggest prick going, but I still love that. And I've never He's seen, cl- I've never fun. seen them close up. So every time I've seen Steely Dan, it was always from a distance. So when I see Donald Fagan, he looks like Ray Charles. Like he's, I, you know. I, I swear, just, I, I, that's the, Ray Charles. Yeah, there. the glasses. The glasses. I can see that. The yeah, ten like, years. Uh, you know, yeah, the, the way his playing style, and he turns that head. And he's, yeah, yeah, real. No, that That's makes a good sense. story. We'll have to we'll have to go yeah, I'll delve into that right. one. Yeah. <laughs> did you finish the story, or did you kind of like there's a, yeah, so just yeah? You don't even I have to go there for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Part two. Because uh, I was kind of reading, and I was I was I I was I was kind of hearing you in the background. I'm kind of reading through these comments. So we always get the new band one though, is what I wanted. Oh, uh, so the new in band the wake, one. In the wake of losing Peter Tork last week, now this is from Joel. In the wake of losing Peter Tork, how about the monkeys? Should their contribution to the world of music be considered valid, even if they didn't start out as a real band? Yeah, I love the Monkees. Uh, I don't know. It's not that I hate the Monkees. Yeah. But I don't value them. I, I, maybe I, I maybe I devalue them more than I should. I don't know. I, their place in history isn't isn't really etched in stone to me. No, it's pop. You know, uh, I wouldn't put them up there with the Beatles. I, I but think they're treated accordingly. Yeah. I just think that they're, okay. they're yeah. they are where I they should be. Yeah. They're you know they they have a couple of Good pop songs, you know, if great gonna, pop songs, arguably. If but I'm gonna go to a, a band similar, not similar, but I, I, I would say like, uh, oh, what the hell's their name? They're on the Apple label. Ah, <laughs> uh, I just got a fucking <laughs> take bad finger. Ba- thank you, bad, bad finger? finger. Oh, yeah. I love bad finger. I would go bad finger uh, over the. You know, what I mean, it, it's, yeah, they're in that same kind of genre. They're, they weren't quite. They didn't get there. They, they weren't they quite at the top, and you know, I mean, the monkeys gained popularity because of their TV, TV show. TV show, yeah, yeah. That's a tragic story. The Bad Finger oh, really story, is. really yeah, tragic story. Um, those albums are fucking great, and it's kind of like hidden gems. Mm-hmm. Catherine know? asks how 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 historically accurate American Pie is by Don McLean. Oh, very I that accurate. Song, so <laughs> I don't ask you that one. <laughs> we can move on from it's that. Pretty, song. It's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who asked that? Catherine. 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 Who? Catherine Mar- Marin Marinino. Oh, uh, that's a uh, cat from uh, Catastrophe. Oh, okay. The singer from Catastrophe. Yeah, yeah. I'd say it's pretty accurate. I don't like it. I was never a fan of it. I, I, I kind of cringe it. when I hear it. I used to sing the shit out of it when I was a kid in the backseat on an eight-track cassette on an eight-track player. 
<laughs> and Weird Al, Weird Al Yankovic has a great version of it too. It's does a, he? Yeah, oh, he does. <laughs> yeah, it's about Star Wars. Oh, no. My my, this here Anakin guy. Oh, oh, how's it go? My my, this here Anakin <laughs> guy. Maybe Vader someday later. Now he's just a small fry. <laughs> <laughs> I love Weird Al. I, it's yeah. one thing I regret not seeing Weird Al Yankovic. With that man. <laughs> All right, you wrap it up. <laughs> if you're listening to us, however you're listening to us, on iTunes, we're on Spotify now, man. Did you know this? Yeah, I did. You told me that. We're on Spotify. Not too many people know about that, but wherever you're listening to us, if it says whether it says follow or subscribe, whatever that mechanism is that attaches you to us, do it. Click on it. I'll, yes. I, I just think that, Marissa, you just rolled right in here. You're, Thanks. I, I mean, it's <laughs> literally, if, if we were... If we were Two wheels just cruising down the highway. You just kind of split so us up right in the middle, <laughs> and we didn't even hesitate. There wasn't. Yeah. She just like it rolled. just she rolled, right man. In, it was just man. oh my god, I can't believe how smooth here. it was. Yeah, I and did. I just, I, for the record, I just met her tonight, and it was just I, I yeah. could not believe how great this show went tonight. <laughs> and thank you everybody for listening to Thanks. it. Bad news keeps pouring on me. Bad news keeps pouring.